So basically, this is a win-win situation. It's a win-win. Yeah. Win. Hey guys, hey. hope you're all doing well. We recently made a video on the complete beginner's guide to pensions. And in that video, we introduced you to the idea of salary sacrifice and why it's something that you should consider. Well, today we want to dig a little deeper yeah. and show you how it can help you pay more money into your pensions and pay less tax legally with the emphasis on legally using salary sacrifice, an arrangement offered by the government to employers. We're making this video at a time when the government recently announced an increase in national insurance by 1.25% for employees, employers, and the self-employed because of the new health and social care levy. This increase in national insurance is due to kick in in April, 2022. Employees will now pay national insurance at a rate of 13.25% instead of 12% previously. And employers will now pay national insurance at 15.05% instead of 13.8%. This is of course a hit to everyone's pockets at a time when we'd much rather see more of our own net income each month due to rising inflation at the moment. So we're making this video to show you how investing into your pension will essentially get your money more into a tax-free environment as a result of you paying less tax and national insurance. Now, of course, we're aware that for some people, putting more money into their pensions might not be their immediate reaction because some people might want to contribute less in order to hold back some more of their own money. We're aware of that. But we're hoping that today's video will give you the information you need such that when it's time for you to become more tax efficient about your income and stuff like that and your wealth building journey, you would have this video at your fingertips in order to learn from. Finally, to make this video super practical today, we've got for you guys a very practical illustration towards the end of this video for somebody who's earning 35,000 pounds. We're gonna walk you through step by step a before and after picture for that person if they decided to do salary sacrifice. And on top of that, we have for you guys some information on what you should do next if what we're sharing today is at all appealing to you. If you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to hit that like button, guys. We'd really appreciate it. And if you're new to this channel, I'm Mary. And I'm Ken. Of the Humble Penny and Financial Joy Academy. And what we do on this channel is to give you the tips, the insights, and the practical hacks to help you work towards a dream life of financial independence and money joy. Okay, let's dive straight in. So what is salary sacrifice? So from a pension perspective, salary sacrifice is when you give up some of your monthly pre-tax income and your employer puts it towards your pensions for you. So how do you pay less tax with salary sacrifice and how does it help towards your pension? Okay, so there are some really interesting advantages and we've got them bullet pointed just so you know them straight away. So the very first one is that you pay less national insurance and your employer also pays less national insurance as a result. Some employers actually take their savings from national insurance and pay it into your pensions as a further contribution. So we're going to be showing you guys a very practical illustration of what that might look like. The second advantage is that you pay less tax by doing salary sacrifice and putting some of your gross income into your pensions. You therefore get taxed on a lower taxable income. Next is that you see an increase in your take home pay as a result of paying less national insurance and income tax. Also, if you're a higher or additional rate taxpayer, salary sacrifice means that you don't need to claim back the extra tax relief yourself through your self-assessment tax return. Now this next one is very important for parents. If you're a higher taxpayer, maybe earning between 50K and 60K, doing salary sacrifice not only gives you tax relief at 40%, but if you're also claiming child benefit for your child, using salary sacrifice helps you to reduce your taxable income below 50,000, just below 50,000, thereby allowing you to retain your full child benefit allowance. If you're part of a family and you've got say two kids as an assumption, we've estimated that that child benefit, keeping the full child benefit is worth £1,827.80p per year, assuming that you know your partner, for example, is working but earns less than £50,000. This is quite material to family budgets. And in case you're wondering how it worked out that number real quick, the first child gets £21.15 and the second child usually gets £14 worth of child benefits. If you add those together and multiply it about 52 weeks, 
That's how I worked out that number I mentioned earlier. Now, the next advantage of salary sacrifice applies to really high earners, okay? So if you're somebody who earns between 100,000 pounds and 125,000 pounds, you are effectively paying a marginal tax rate of 60%. Now, why is that? This is because your personal allowances start to taper the minute you earn a penny over £100,000, okay? So the rules currently state that you lose one pound for every two pounds you earn above £100,000. And you lose all your personal allowances at around £125,000. So the beauty of salary sacrifice then is that if you are able to sacrifice some of your gross earnings, let's say you are somebody who is very fortunate and maybe earning £110,000, you could sacrifice that £10,000, provided you're okay to do that within your lifestyle, into your pension, bringing your earnings below that £100,000, meaning that you are then able to retain your full personal allowances, which at the moment I believe stands at £12,570. All right, so now that we've spelt out those advantages for you guys, as you ponder them, we wanna just give you a quick illustration, okay? Because a lot of this can kind of go over your head uh, and, you know, it can be quite challenging to, to understand theoretically. Okay, so I wanted to show you a practical example. So up on the screen right now, we've got, you know, an illustration for somebody who earns 35,000 pounds, okay? And they currently contribute 5% into their personal pension, okay? Now, we know that the rules state that employers also have to contribute at a minimum of 3%, but for the purposes of this illustration. Let's leave the employer contribution to the side. So I want to just keep focus on what, on what impact salary sacrifice has on this person's contributions if they put 5% into their pensions, okay? So up on the screen, you can see um, the first column just shows us the various areas we're gonna talk about. The second column where you have red shows us the before picture. So before they've done salary sacrifice, and the next column after in green shows us what their picture might look like in terms of what their net income, their gross income. And the final column gives us a picture of any differences we see, okay? So with this individual, let's look at the, the second column, the before column. Here we're seeing somebody who earns 35,000 pound gross income. Next line, we see them the personal allowance being taken out. So they're getting no tax on that. That moves us to the taxable income of 22,430 pounds, okay? Out of that then comes 20% tax. You can see that line, 4,486 pounds. And then after that comes their national insurance. These are all annual numbers. And then after that is their 5% pension that they are paying in, bringing us to an annual income of 25,712. That shows us what their take home pay would be on an annual basis. Now I've just put in there the employers national insurance for illustration purposes. So you can see that's 3,610 pounds. This is based on current rules before the NI numbers increase next year, okay? Now, I wanted to just show you that for us to see. Now, if they want to do salary sacrifice, what this means is that they then sacrifice that 5% from their gross income. So if you look at the next column where it says after, you can see that their gross income decreases from 35,000 to 33,250. And you're thinking, why is that? Well, it's because they've now sacrificed that into their pension directly, okay? You can see that's reflected in the column that says difference on the right-hand side. What that then means is that their income for which gets subjected to tax is lower. So you can see 33,250 less personal allowance of 12,570 gives us a lower taxable income of 2680. Okay, and out of that comes tax at a lower level, so 20% of that taxable income of 4,136 pounds. And of course, out of that comes national insurance, this is the key bit, at a lower number as well of 2,842 pounds, okay? So you can see by looking at that, that the net annual income is now sitting at a higher take home pay of 26,272 pounds. Pounds. And on top of that, the employer's national insurance is now at a lower number also of 3,369 pounds, okay? That takes us down to the bottom bit where we're now looking at the annual cost to the employer, which previously was 31,390 pounds, but is now at a lower cost 
of £31,631. And then right at the bottom, you can see the annual pension contribution for this person is the same at 1750 before and after. Now, what's very interesting about this is that notice that in this scenario, this person's net income is higher, they still have the same level of pension contributions, but their employer also makes a savings in national insurance, okay? But what's interesting is that a lot of employers usually then take those savings that are made and contribute that into that particular employee's pensions as an additional pension contribution. So this particular individual could then invest more money by their employer contributing that excess savings back into their own pension because the employer is not worse off. Mm -hmm. If you look at the bottom there where it says annual cost to the employer, if the employer puts that £242 saving into the employee's pension, they come back to where they were before, before this whole exercise of salary sacrifice actually started in the first place. Highlighting the, the top points from this, we'll note that this individual sacrificed the same amount into their pension, they paid less tax and they paid less employee national insurance. So just bringing all this together now, why on earth is it compelling? Do you want to tell us? Yeah, well, it's compelling because your net income has increased or it can stay the same if you wish to pay it into your pension by doing so maintaining your level of lifestyle. Number two is you can contribute more into your pensions by your employer giving you national insurance savings. And number three, your employer's costs stay the same even after giving you the national insurance savings. So basically, this is a win-win situation. It's a win-win. Yeah. And all that needs to happen is for the administrative processes to be put in place mm -hmm. if your employer doesn't already have a salary sacrifice set up or program in place. And on top of all this, the savings get even much bigger if you have matched pension contributions from your employer as well. So there's so much to be saved by you doing salary sacrifice for a portion of your gross income. Okay, so let's assume that you've heard all this and you're probably asking yourself, what should I do next? Well, you can start by asking your employer if they offer salary sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, ask them if they can introduce it. Here is a government's guide for employers below. Number two, have a meeting with your employer and tell them that you want to do salary sacrifice. Number three is work out what salary sacrifice means for your net income and your pensions. Your employer can hopefully give you an illustration of this. All right, so number four is to ask your employer if they will be willing to contribute their national insurance savings from employers and I as an additional contribution to your pension. Number five is to make sure that your employer documents your pre-salary sacrifice gross income. The reason for this is down to employee benefits. So if you get a life insurance cover, for example, which is often based on multiples of gross salary, having your salary documented before you had salary sacrifice would come in very handy in this sort of situation. The next one's linked to mortgages. So applications for mortgages that are usually based on multiples of income could also be affected by you doing salary sacrifice. So this is something that you should also make sure you consider if this is something you want to explore. And the final point is just more of information. Note that salary sacrifice only applies to the employed, not the self-employed. So guys, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Is salary sacrifice something that you would like to consider? And if so, do you have any further questions you would like to ask us? Let us know in the comments below, guys. Really appreciate you watching today's video and would love for you to support us on this journey by hitting that subscribe button to our channel. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And as ever, in, in all things, things, be thankful and seek joy. joy. Take care, guys. Take care, people. Bye. Bye.